All right, for this uh, practice, uh, you are going to do it in the Excel project number three, where I asked you to uh, construct a chart with the bond value as the vertical axis and uh, the uh, interest rate as the horizontal axis. You will get a, a curve that it has exactly the same uh, shape like this curve. Okay. Um, now let's talk about uh, the default risk. So uh, the default basically means uh, the firm is unable to uh, pay off its debt obligations. So basically if you are an investor of the bond, uh, when the firm is unable to pay uh, the coupons and the face value, so your money cannot get uh, back. Um, so that's uh, called uh, default. Uh, in the bond scenario, in a corporate scenario, this is called a bankruptcy. Okay, so if an issuer defaults, the company get default, investor receive less than the promised return, that's for sure. Okay, so what will investors do? So uh, some of the cash flows may disappear. You may just receive a coupon one, coupon two, coupon three, but you're not receiving coupon four, coupon five as promised. All right, and uh, in the valuation process, we will uh, um, increase the discount rate or the interest rate okay if there is a higher risk okay so as a result of a higher denominator uh, from the higher return high, higher interest rate then the value would be lower the, in other words uh, if uh, the company has a higher risk of a default then the value or the price of its bond would be lower although the company may pay the same coupon same uh, face value Okay, so uh, this is really influenced by the issuer's financial strength. So here is the uh, bond ratings according to the risk of default. So triple A uh, basically means uh, the bond uh, has a high standard that uh, they're very financially healthy uh, security and they are having a minimum credit risk. Okay. And uh, we have uh, three firms on the Wall Street that gives rankings or ratings about the bond's quality. We have a Fitch, Standard Poor, and Moody's. And uh, uh, as the score goes lower from AAA to AA, from A to B to C to D, you can see that the default risk is getting higher and higher. Or uh, we can say that when there's a higher risk of default, then the bond is uh, rated uh, uh, lower and lower. So uh, for the triple A's, uh, these are investment grade bond. So you can put your money there for long term investment, for value investment, like Warren Buffett. Um, and for this kind of bonds, um, you can only invest for a short term. Uh, so you basically want to buy at lower price and sell at higher price. This is called a speculation. So these are speculative grades of bond. Um, here is uh, the next subject called callable bonds. The callable bonds allows issuer to uh, refund the issued bond if the discount rate declines. So first and foremost, you need to remember this financial rule. If the interest rate goes down, people want to refinance their debt. Okay, let me repeat. If the interest rate goes down, people want to refinance their debt. So. Um, that happens in the mortgage market. If uh, you're looking at a lower interest rate, um, then you probably want to uh, replace the current loan with another loan that has a lower interest than the current loan. Okay, so same idea for the uh, borrower, which is a company. If the interest rate is going down, they want to refinance. They want to call back or just to purchase back the bond they have already issued or paying back the money they have already borrowed. And then they borrow again, okay? Then borrow again at a, a lower rate, okay? Then borrow again at a lower rate. So we just to focus on the first half of the story. They recall the bond, they call back the bonds, okay? They call back the bonds. So if the bond is called back, uh, it must be the discount rate or the interest rate declines. Okay? And uh, as a result of a lower interest rate, if you still have the bonds uh, floating around and uh, you still pay the same cash flows, same $40 coupons each period and the same $1,000 20 years from now, then um, the present value of those cash flows actually increase. 
Okay, we're talking about same coupon, same face value in the future, but just because the discount rate goes down, uh, the present value would go up. Okay, the present value would go up when you apply less discount. All right, so the issuer is unhappy with the deal because they are paying more uh, cash uh, in terms of today's dollar. Okay, and so they want to uh, call back and refinance. Okay, after they call it back, they uh, pay back how much uh, they borrowed, and then they can borrow again with a lower rate. So that's their strategy. Um, in our practice, uh, we have to uh, calculate uh, this term called yield to call. Yield to call is the holding period return if the bond is called back by the issuer. So this is uh, our uh, study. So you have a, a 10 year, 10% semi annual coupon bond selling for this price. This 10% is not yield to maturity. This 10% is a coupon rate. Be careful with that. And uh, you have uh, uh, four years to be called back. And uh, this is a callback value. This is 1050. There is a 5% call premium being added in there. Okay. So sometimes the uh, issuer are not. Uh, the issuer is not is afraid that the investor may not sell back the bond, so they just uh, add a little bit more money to sweeten the deal. Okay, so this is called a call premium. So what is the yield to call? If you have this uh, a question, then you have to uh, uh, adjust for n instead of a 10 years. You put it as four years. Since it's a semi-annual bond, you use a two times the four years, so that gives you eight, some annual periods. So this is the current price, serve as the present value, don't forget to put negative sign. And uh, 50 is from 10% times 1,000 face value divided by two, that's your periodical payment, and the future value is 1040, 1050, I'm sorry. And then you solve for the interest rate, you get 3.568, and be careful, everything here is on a summer annual term. So this rate is a summer annual rate. And the yield to call, just like yield to maturity, just like a coupon rate, is an annual term. You have to find a way to annualize it. When this is a half a year rate, uh, you need to multiply it by two to get a uh, annual rate. Okay, so the annual uh, yield to call is 7.137%. All right, the next subject is uh, interest rate risk. So uh, the interest rate risk come from the uh, fluctuation of uh, interest rate. So as I have demonstrated earlier, when interest rate goes up, price would go down. When interest goes down, price would go up. So you will see the price being shifting up and down as interest rate change. And when price changes, when price fluctuates, that's risk. Okay, and here are some uh, conclusion you need to remember. Uh, the prices of long-term bonds change more than short-term bonds. Okay, that's uh, that's uh, a statement number one. Statement number two: the prices of a low coupon rate bonds change more than high coupon rate bonds. So uh, that basically says a long-term bond is more sensitive than short-term, and a low coupon is more sensitive than high coupon. Just remember that conclusion. And now I'm going to. Uh, I'll show you how that works. So this is the bond value um, uh, versus the discount rate. So the green curve is for long maturity bond or long term bond, and the the right curve is for short term bond. And you can see that the green one is uh, steeper. So that means for a small amount of a change of discount rate, the bond price will change by a larger amount. So the green one or the steeper curve is more sensitive. Okay, and here is a comparison of a high coupon bond versus a low coupon bonds. So the low coupon is actually steeper and the high coupon bond is flatter. So a flatter curve means for a big change of the uh, X value or discount rate, then the bond value or the Y value would be changed by a small amount. Okay, so that's the not sensitive. Okay, so that's the if that's the indication from a flatter curve. All right, so uh, what do we uh, use this knowledge for? So uh, when we trade bonds, if you think interest rate is going up, then the bond price will go down. If interest rate is going down, bond price will go up, okay? And uh, if the bond price goes down, so between uh, 
high sensitive bonds or low sensitive bonds, you should choose low sensitive bonds because uh, those bonds would have a value going down by less. Okay, so you hold less sensitive bonds if you think interest rate is going up. Okay, and these bonds would uh, have a less price decline. And when interest goes down and every bond has uh, its price increased, then you want to hold more sensitive bonds because uh, the price increase will be higher for this kind of bonds. So who are the less sensitive bonds and who are the more sensitive bonds? Short-term high coupon are less sensitive. Long-term low coupon are more sensitive. Just remember that conclusion. You'll be tested in your midterm exam.